Good day, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Apiola. For this video lesson, it is meant for those who are intentional about learning coordinate geometry. So, right here, we're going to consider certain subtopics like equation of line. We're going to look at some distance between points. We're going to consider gradients. We're going to consider the perpendicularity and parallelism. So much more alone in this video. You don't want to go anywhere, and you have to stay with us. Of course, we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So right there we have coordinate geometry. So we have these slides prepared for us. So some slides are actually repeated for emphasis and to broaden our view regarding those concepts. So we have the first slide. We have the definition of coordinate geometry. Here the definition presents it as a coordinate graph, right, uh, which is rectangular, a rectangular grid, you know, with two number lines. So these are the number lines you can see they actually intersect each other right so the x-axis is the horizontal number line so this is the x-axis right and the y-axis of course is the vertical um, line or number line to be very specific so the axis intersects each other at the origin so where x and y axis meet that is the origin so represented by what zero zero so this is one perspective regarding coordinate geometry or cartesian um, coordinates okay so let's have the next slide all right, so we have the Cartesian coordinates. When you refer to something regarding Cartesian, you are looking at uh, the concept whereby you have um, this represented in the x and y axis. So of course, you can have the z also introduced, but basically, this is what we have here. So look at another perspective regarding this concept. So a right rectangular system for identifying the locations of points. So if you want to really assign number of value, to certain points, right, on a graph, or probably you're talking about a map. This is where this concept becomes very useful. So, uh, in two or three dimensional space, so of course this is two dimensional space whereby I'm referring to the X and the Y axis. So if I have the Z, or that is letter Z, of course, so that is where we have the three dimensional space. So look at this right here. So this side, this is our y axis, you know, and we have our x axis. So this point you are trying to identify, so that is where the Cartesian coordinate comes in. That system is very salient here. So this is our x and this is our y. So how do we identify our x? What is perpendicular to the x axis? That points to the value of your x. And what is perpendicular to the y axis? That points the value of your y for that specific point. Let's have the next slide. So still we have another uh, view, right? Uh, the Cartesian coordinate um, system is two-dimensional grid, right, formed by drawing two number lines, like we identified earlier. So one line is perpendicular to the other. So in, in, in their concept of being perpendicular, they actually cut across each other. So the horizontal number line is called the x-axis, which we know. The vertical, of course, is the y-axis. So the point at which they meet, that is where we refer to, where they intersect, that's where we refer to at the origin, this point right here so you see zero zero so this is just another um, branding of what we've seen earlier so let's have the next slide okay so we still have another year so the Cartesian coordinate system consists of two axes these emphasis are very important because when you refer to the Cartesian coordinate system this is incomplete without the axis you know the number line axis that we refer to the x and the y they are the basic foundation of whatever thing we are going to be doing right here so and the x and the y which intersect each other at the point called origin right here and it's used to define the position of any point using all that pair so if you want to define the position of this point right here so you are going to have two other pair so one of the item in the pair right will be coming from the x axis and the other value will be coming from the y axis so using this value you can actually determine the position of a point right on a graph or on a particular um, reading presentation so this is what we have so we call the plane or the Cartesian plane, or the coordinate plane, or the XY plane. So you can see the XY plane, the coordinate plane. So whatever thing is presented to you, you know exactly what to do with them. We have the next slide. 
So still we have the, the Cartesian coordinates provides an easy way to locate points on a plane. So I'm actually doing this emphasis so that we can have a strong background work, right, on this topic. So what is a two-dimensional surface? So it consists of a coordinate grid separated by a horizontal number line, that is your x-axis, and the vertical number line, which we know very well. So we have the intersection of this line, this is where we refer to as the origin. So the coordinates or the values, right, supply that the origin is actually zero and zero. So this one is for x, this one is for y. So right Right here, x values as zero, and y carries a value of zero as well. So the two axes divide the grid into four quadrants. So this is your first quadrant, your second quadrant, your third quadrant, your fourth quadrant. So for each quadrant, certain values or certain um, signs, right, are attached uh, properly. So the two axes divide the grid into four quadrants, numbered one to four in a counterclockwise. You know your clockwise will read 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but right here in a counterclockwise way, that's how the quadrants are being segmented. So you see this representation. Every point on the grid can be identified with two numbers called the coordinates. So in the coordinates, you have two numbers, or you can refer to it as your ordered pair. So the first item, like I said, in the ordered pair or in the coordinates, that is for your x value. The next one or the other one is your y value. Do you see that now? So the first number is the x coordinates, or you can call it the abscissa, right? Then we have the second number, that is your y coordinate, which you refer to as your ordinate. So the first value you are going to be seeing, you refer to it as your abscissa, and the next value, which is for y, you refer to it as your ordinate. Let's still buttress this concept. So, the x coordinate of the, of the abscissa is the first coordinate of an ordered pair, right? So, the first value you are going to be seeing, that is for your x, that is your abscissa. Then we have the y coordinate, or you refer to it as the ordinate, right? Is the second coordinate of an ordered pair. So, for any coordinates, so the first coordinate is your abscissa, that is the value for your x, right? Then the next one, which is your ordinate, that is the value for your y. That is basically what this presentation has been talking about. Let's have the next slide. So you can see, so when you have your x and y, this is a representation of what I'm trying to paint. So we have the next slide. Yes, so earlier we talked about this things being split into quadrants, four quadrants to be very specific, and they are being read in a counterclockwise, anti-clockwise way, so you can see it right here. So this is the start, then it ends right here. So this is a very good representation. So look at the first quadrant, this is the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. Okay, so you see this. So we have all x value are positive and all y value are positive. So whatever value are being supplied right here for x and y, that is your abscissa and your ordinate, they are positive. So I'm going to be having either 2 and 3 or 3 and 5, they are going to be positive. But right here, this is the negative side. Do you see that now? So you can see all x values are negative right here. So for the x value, they are going to be negative. So right here, I'll be measuring, because for me to be able to trace the value of x, it has to run perpendicular to x. So if I try to run a perpendicular line, that tells you the value of x. And right here, x carries a negative expression. Y still remain positive. So all in the second quadrant, all x value are negative and all y values are positive. So that means the abscissa I've seen here will be probably minus 2, right? And your ordinate here, which is for y, will be somewhat still 4 or 3 or 5. It's going to be positive. So if I move right here, both of them will be negative in the third quadrant. So I'm going to be having minus 2 and minus 5, which is the value for y. This is the value for x. We can see that. So um, what we have right here, all x values are positive and these are actually negative. So basically, it's just like the opposite to each other. So whatever thing I have here, here, all positive, here, all negative. So you can see here, x is um, negative, x is positive. Do you see that now? So here, y is um, negative, y is positive. So basically, you can use that concept also to remember this quadrant. Let's have the next slide. So uh, we now have the general formula regarding the distance between two points. You know, when you are giving a um, presentation or questions to determine the distance between two points, it's very easy. Of course, using these slides, I'm going to um, share with us, you know, how that formula, or how this formula is actually derived. So what is the distance between two general points with coordinates? So remember, this is your abscissa and this is your ordinates, right? The x value and the y value. So we have x1, y1. So basically, we have two points here. These are the coordinates. 
right so we have the horizontal distance between the points is your x2 minus x1 i'm going to show you to us as we move further in this video the vertical distance between the points is your y2 minus y1 so how do we now derive the formula for distance between two points we use the pythagoras theorem so which is you can see your a and your b so that is basically a square plus b square so remember it's going to equals to whatever value that you have so if you remember your our pythagoras theorem you know uh, hypotenuse square equals adjacent square plus opposite square so you can see horizontal distance tells you about your what about your adjacent square then your vertical you know this side on the vertical that is your opposite of course so that is where we have this formula derived from so let's see the next slide to expand it further so you can say deriving and using the distance formula very very easy distance between points so look at the triangle is being set up here to actually determine our slope and the distance between points so you can see the point we are looking at right there so we ask to solve for d so d is your hypotenuse right so here is your opposite here is your adjacent do you see that now so basically you have this expression so a has the value of x2 minus x1 y has the value of y2 minus y1 so using our pythagoras theorem to get our d that is what you are going to have of course so if you now decide to remove um, the square from your d what do you do you square root both sides so if i square root both sides the square cancel the square root and right here and i have a big square root so that is what accounts for the formula that we saw earlier with a big square so it's actually the same thing so either you are using this and at the end of the day you are going to find the square root of your answer or you just apply the square root right from the beginning then you carry out your solution properly let's have the next slide so we still have aside from the distance between two points we have another subtopic which is referred to as the midpoint you know of the line segment so in geometry the points on the line segment that divides the segment into two congruent segments that is two equal segments so like we say midpoint you know the middle right so these are end point a and point b so this is the midpoint that actually splits this line into two equal parts that is all we are saying let's have the next slide so the midpoint of a line segment is the point halfway between the end point of the line segment so like i identified this as our end point right so it is written as a coordinate and it's usually denoted by letter m so we have we have presentations that actually use letter m and do not forget that basically when you when we walk around this topic in geometry your m our m is usually identified for our slope or our gradient so i'm just trying to allow this for our presentation so but basically you know that this is the midpoint so what is the formula for your line the midpoint of a line segment let's have the next slide so the midpoint of the segment that joins the point together so we have these are the points x1 and y1 then the second point um x2 and y2 is the point so you can see that's right here so we have this end point right here look at the end point do we see that now so how do we now get the midpoint to get the midpoint is just very easy so you just take it this way so look at this is your x1 this is your y1 this is your x2 this is your y2 do you see that now so look at the formula the formula is basically x1 plus x2 over 2 then we have y1 plus y2 over 2 that's how you get the midpoint of a line segment so don't worry about this example i have prepared examples for us to understand the concepts that we're introducing in this topic let's have the next slide so we also have the section formula you know we have the external we have the internal so the coordinates of the points we have point p which is x and y which divides the line segment joining the point a x1 x1 and y1 then we have this so internally in this ratio so this is the formula that you have right now so you can define this as your section formula when it comes to internally so let's consider the internal and the external do you know what these concepts are very easy trust me the next slide so basically you can see we have division of an interval a b in a given ratio so once you have an interval presented to you and it's divided in a given ratio these are the formulas you want to use. so for the internal this is what you have so if you're talking about the x this is what we are going to use you also have to solve for the y this is what you have to use so this is for your internal this is for your external do not worry uh, more explanations will be provided as we go further in the video let's have the next slide so we now talk about gradients or slope right so um, y equals mx plus c is the general equation of any straight line where m is the gradient okay of the line which tells the gradient tells you how steep the line is and c is the intercept so this m is your gradient c is your intercept intercept that is the point in which this line actually touches the y 
as in, so right here, I can identify my A, C as 1. Do you see that? So now we are actually reading the graph properly. So, and this is a linear equation, of course. So we have this. So look at this. Y equals 2x plus 1. How do we know that? Because we have solved for our slope, then we have this as 2. So this tells you from this equation now that your slope is what? It's 2, represented by letter M. So this has a gradient of 2 and an intercept of what? Of 1. You can see on our y. And the coordinates now will now be what? 0, then 1. How do we get 0 and 1? I'm going to explain as we go further. Let's have the next slide. So right here, we now have a further explanation. Okay, so I'm just going to read out what we have here. So you can see, like, I identify the letter, the letter M as your gradient or your steepness. Now, the bigger the number, that tells you the steeper the line that we are trying to represent or present. So if the number, of course, is positive, you know, it tells you that the slope upwards. And if the number is negative, the value is negative, then the line slopes downward. And do not forget that the parallel lines have the same segment. So there's a concept regarding parallelism. So when you say two, when lines are parallel, that tells you that the slope are actually the same thing. So if for line AB and line CD, you want to see if they are parallel, that means the slope of line AB should be 4 and the slope of line CD should be 4 as well. So what if they are not perpendicular? Of course, I'm going to identify this. So you can see the C is the intercept. That tells you where the line cross or touches up the y axis so its portion name is actually the y intercept so we have some uh, instruction right here so you can actually rearrange you know in, depending on how the equation is presented to you so right there we've come to the end of the introductory part of this topic so much more are loaded in this video all you just need to do to have access to the full video lesson is just to click on the link in the description below this is going to get you to the my school website right there you get to subscribe and have access to these videos so do not forget that you have to hit the like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video content just for you